both sides. One of the really valuable, I think, pieces of insight from Nassim Tlaib, who wrote Black Swan and Anti-Fragile, and his new, this is from his newest book called Skin in the Game, is you are not allowed to have an opinion on a subject and have a, have a side on a subject unless you can argue the other side of that subject as well as anybody else. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed to, right? Like, that's just not okay to. So, if I put out a thought on the internet, if I put out a message on the internet, for example, I've already thought about what that means. I've already thought about how different types of people might be impacted about this. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. Here's the type of person that I am, and I want to know if this is the type of person that you are, because I'm interested. I'm very, always very interested in learning more about you, Keto. Like this, I wake up early in the morning, like, what can I learn about Keto today? Um, <laughs> I'm sure. Today, obviously, no different. Right. Um, but are you the type of person that, like, once you start a project like that, like you could be headed to the opera, or you could be headed to the Academy Awards, wh- whatever could be happening, uh-huh. you cannot step away from that project. Like, yes. you just have to. Is that you? Yes. Okay. If I'm in hyper focus mode, it was like right now. I'm like, oh, I haven't eaten all day, so at some point, I'm gonna mute myself and eat like a little baggie of chips ahoy that I stole oh, from my chips kids. Ahoy. Like for real, that's what I'm gonna Amazing. eat right now because I've been zoomed in on this and I'm so frustrated. Mm. The absolute best part about having children is that you get to eat their food. We've spoken yes. about this before. Oh, yeah. I, I got to eat Baby Bell cheese and cow cheese yesterday. <laughs> Those are two things that adults don't get to eat unless they have kids. But once they have kids, they get to eat them. And they're like, why would I ever eat normal cheese? Right, right. It's like, why did I ever stop buying this for myself? Like, it's great. <laughs> like, it's like- if the kids never come back, like that's why I'm still continuing this. <laughs> that's it. That, that that's awesome. That's all. Now, Keto, are those those are the cookies that are the hard cookie, the crunchy cookies? Yes, right? the crunchy. I don't like the chewy ones. These are okay. We've got it. This is a poll that we needed. This is yes. what people tune in to hear. Absolutely. First of all, I agree. So I need I need to address the panel here because for for me, cookies that come out of a package that are chewy. It's it's the de- it's the devil's business. Yeah, like, it's weird. It's, 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 un- it's unnatural. Like it's, it's weird. an abomination. It's like, are they sale? Did they go sale? Or is this the way they? No, are? I don't you know, know. No, I don't know. You can't confirm. No, right? <laughs> Who knows? Like, are they supposed? So, in my mind, this was some type of. It's like a Marvel superhero origin or villain uh, or villain origin story. <laughs> like something went horribly wrong at Axis Cookies, and like a villain super villain fell into the vat of cookie dough. And all the cookies after that came out chewy, and they just ran with it. And now, now it's like Captain Cookie, and he terrorizes Spider Man. So, Amber, where do you sit here? Because I know that you want to chime in on on this subject. Should cookies be chewy coming out of a package that are not fresh baked cookies, yes. or should they be cr- no, crunchy? I don't like crunchy hard cookies. They, they all right, should always be chewy. Okay, you just turn your mic off. You're done for the day. Um, Let's circle back around to more important things because Amber obviously has the wrong opinion about this. You're just wrong, Amber. Um, and I don't like to tell people their opinions wrong. Yeah, I don't like to tell people their opinions wrong unless it's wrong like yours was just now. And I'm obligated morally to tell you that you've got yeah. the wrong opinion. So, sometimes sometimes it's responsible to have an objective conversation. Like, like objective discourse, I believe in debate unless somebody is completely objectively wrong. And in this case, you are, it's Amber. Wrong. So it's absolutely wrong. That's fine. We can move on. It makes no sense. I don't know what chemical softens cookies uh, indefinitely. And I don't want to know what that chemical is. And sure, I, totally more importantly, no, no, I don't want that chemical inside me. I don't want it in me. Uh, it's like so. it's anything that is the color neon. <laughs> I've been missing my purple drink from Starbucks, by the way. So on this one, I will fight you. <laughs> Get those radioactive drink. <laughs> have you noticed, this is interesting, have you noticed that there has been a distinct correlation in the quality of Carolina's contributions to this podcast and her not having the purple drink? In the absence of her radioactive purple juice. Uh, 
coincidence? I think not. I don't think uh, that that's a coincidence. One iota. She's given herself at least two months for the cells to regenerate in her prefrontal cortex, uh, and it's paying off mm. like like gangbusters here on the uh, on the podcast. It's uh, I don't think uh, what's what's the term correlation versus causation. Uh, <laughs> Think, right. No, this is this is this is a correlation, and O is very close to one. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. One. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, Jonathan, you're outside in Central America somewhere. I um, am, uh, but and the and the quality seems to be halfway decent, right? It's pretty good. I mean, you've got a lovely right. view behind you. You've got trees, and it looks like there's a lovely south southeasterly breeze blowing behind you. There's a little bit uh, of a breeze. It's nice. There is um, two people cutting something on either side of me. Uh, there's some boats behind me, and there is a donkey very close that is very, very loud, and above me now I'm covered, so it's not as much of a worry, but above me there is a tree with multiple iguanas in it, and I'm told that the iguanas consistently fall out of the tree. <laughs> so, if that does happen, I'm going to let you guys know, because that's going to be a big deal. <laughs> I'm so hoping it happens. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm it happened. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, but this I is this only is the Oh my god, it's it's funny. But this is this is going to be my new spot. So there's this co-working space just opened. I'm member number eleven, and oh, nice. the internet's good. There's multiple routers that they zap together, and it's been good to work in. I brought my office chair here. I I because nice. the furniture, the Mexican furniture. I don't know what it is. Is so unbelievably uncomfortable. Like check this out. This is the chair I'm sitting on now. Like, why would anybody make, like, that, uh, why would anybody make a chair like that? Sitting up, yeah, that's uncomfortable. Right. And so, so anyway, so I bought an office chair from Amazon and got it delivered here, and it's life-changing. And, like, it's funniest thing, because everybody's so, like, oh, my God, you have an office chair. It's like, bro, this is, like, a hundred bucks on Amazon. You could have one, too, in two days. Uh, but that's just not the way that people think here, I guess. Anyway, this is where we're going to be recording from, so you'll get a lot of different sounds from me uh, in Kettle, the coming weeks. Kettle, your your thoughts on Mexican furniture? Like any, you know, do you feel attacked, or is this a valid point that Jonathan's made? Or? Um, no, it's just he trailed off like, oh well, you know, you're gonna be, this, you're gonna be hearing a lot from me, and I'm like starting with okay. the complaining on Mexican furniture. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, that makes sense. Maybe the, you'll uh, expand it, on that later. <laughs> Did, did you secretly flee Mexico for Canada because of the because furniture? Because of the furniture. That oh. was the primary reason. I was like, I, right. I'm searching for better furniture. And I was like, yeah, Canadian furniture looks pretty solid. So I was like, screw right. it. I'm leaving my entire family uh, crossing two borders because, you know, chairs. Yeah. All right. So this... <laughs> This is a, you know, uh, Amber helped us put out a book cover for your first book, your biography. Oh my God, uh, we love that. Oh, that was, yeah, that was so good. Much. That was good. Yeah, Ket Ketalina Belmont is, I think, uh, uh, enthusiastically apathetic. Uh, <laughs> and now we've got a title for book number two, Ketalina Belmont is, uh Furniture Refugee. Uh, so <laughs> Amber, Amber's going to cook that up. Notes. She's going to cook that up uh, pretty soon. Uh, so you guys can read the uh, the thrilling tale of uh, of of Keto's uh, es escape from mm -hmm. uh, from uncomfortable uh, Mexican furniture uh, into the Great White North, where where all seats are plush. I think um, that would so. legitimately be a really funny story. So so I'm I'm kind of behind the scenes just for fun, like writing a little bit of fiction, and it's nothing oh, yeah. that I ever intend to publish. I mean, maybe I will at one point, but it's purely for me. It's just a project that, like, whenever I have a little bit of time, I'm just, you know, working to create the characters and playing around with. And right. so I'm thinking a lot about storytelling and narratives and stuff like that. And, and, I, feel, and I, I love the idea of trying to communicate really important philosophical points, like foundational right. ways to live in right. the most insane, inane circumstances you possibly can. I just feel like that juxtaposition is really, really funny and entertaining. And so, like, the entire narrative of um, Mexican <laughs> being like, screw this furniture, I'm out. <laughs> and, like, it's this whole, like, deep discovery of, like, life and personage and 
becoming a mother and finding oneself and rising above. But the whole concept is how crappy the furniture is in Mexico. Like, how funny would that be? I like that actually a lot. Oh, oh man. Remembering her early life when she was confined by the by the constraints of uh, futon re uh, oppression. You'd have, uh, you'd have this whole dream sequence, like this whole like nightmare dream sequence montage, <laughs> where she's where she's like a baby in the crib and like hits up against it and is like, ah, oh, this shit again. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it all began. It was all downhill from there. That's <laughs> where it starts. Where it starts is getting eaten, or a dog getting eaten by a futon. Um, so we've got a subject today. I don't know what it is. I didn't pay any attention to any of the backdoor communication today. The Slack channel that we use. You know what it is. You know what it is, man. Um, it's so we had our debrief last week, and it's the conversation based upon our debrief, which oh, I absolutely. certainly remember it. I'm just going to get Amber to share it because. I, not because you don't remember. Not at all, because I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember the context through which it was discussed, and I, so, I absolutely remember what it was. So, Amber, go ahead. So, the topic was, at what point do you take feedback and tailor your message, or whether or not to tailor it? So, you know, we had feedback about the podcast that ended up, you know, hurting someone's feelings, and, you know us having a discussion about whether we should correct course based on this feedback or right. stay true to what we've been doing. Ba basically, somebody gave us feedback and we made fun of him and then he got upset. And so uh, we make fun of stuff on the internet. If you give us feedback, if you give us a review, know that there is a very, very good chance that we will make fun of you and make fun of the feedback. Uh, so just know that going into it. It doesn't mean that we're not listening. Uh, we just probably don't care that much. But the the reason for that is actually a, a very important reason, I think. Um, I mean, it's one thing to say, oh, I don't care about feedback. I don't think that that's enough. What I think is really important to understand, perhaps, is that we've thought a lot and we spend a lot of time developing what we're doing on this podcast and how we're doing it and what it means and how it feels. Like, it may seem like it's off the cuff, but no, like, we do work at this, right? Uh, you know, the episodes themselves are off the cuff, but, like, we're in episode, close to episode 80 now or something, right? I mean, might even be above that. Like, we've been doing this for a while, and so we think about what we're doing before we do it, and we're okay and happy with the actions, which means that when negative feedback comes in, or feedback telling us to improve, we don't listen to it because it's the opinion of one person. And the opinion of one person compared to us collectively thinking, working to try to create something that is interesting, that is different, that meshes and crosses the really difficult chasm of okay, let's try to make this entertaining, but also try to add some value and make it educational. And like, that's a really difficult bridge to cross over, right? And so I think the bigger message here that I want to discuss is actually, and the theme here is how to deal with negative criticism on the internet. Mm -hmm. I think, I think and that's a good, good title. That was, yeah, that was the title on Slack. You didn't, you didn't look at that though. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, good job. Way to go, guys. That's literally the link that you clicked on to get into this show. That was the there title on the link. Well, that's how you got here. So, Are you on a computer? I, I, go I, up Go up to where it says Riverside.fm <laughs> Studio Episode 82 Dash Dealing with Negativity uh -oh. on the Internet. That's actually I'm sorry, what Jonathan. the link is. <laughs> because, because of my success in OTA Level 1 and 2 Online Trainer Academy, I've hired link clickers for me. Yeah, no, that's they come fair. Home week and they click on links for me so that the computer's ready when I sit down at it. Um, you know, you poppers can do it whichever way you prefer. But for me, uh, based on the income that I'm at now, I, I just I just don't have time for links. You, anymore. you say uh, that as a joke and it's kind of funny, but 
I actually have Bobby, my assistant, send me a voice message of my schedule for the day every day at 9 a.m. <laughs> what, what does the voice message sound like? Read a book today. Later on, take a picture of Calvin. Don't forget to tell people that Allison's hot. Uh, oh, and you've got a podcast today, too. But phone it in. Is that, it's like, what, 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 is, what an overserved methodology of employment. Uh, you have nothing on your list of things to do. What does he tell you? Sit in the shade. No, no, the other shade uh, today. Is that, is that what the so what you just said, what you just said is not true, but it's closer to the truth than not. <laughs> I'm just laying out Calvin's monthly schedule. Oh, you, I like I how you it. just told me how I can improve. <laughs> oh, man. oh, man. So, you know, this is a good subject because we know how sensitive Keto is to what people say about things that she does. Um, you right. know, so, she... she she may shed a tear this episode as we discuss that because right. of her high, high levels of sensitivity. Let me let me let me finish let me finish a thought on negativity first, and then I want to oh, throw yeah, it to to Kelly or you and or, or Amber, though she hates speaking, please, so probably please, not Amber. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> there are there's a few very specific things that I'm I'm happy to talk about, like talking about critics and trolls and haters and the difference between them and how to identify them and how to talk about them, but I think what's actually more important here is. It is very easy to have a rash emotional response and get taken down by any kind of criticism or negativity on the internet directed towards you. If you haven't actually thought about what you're doing enough and why you're doing it and all of the potential ramifications to it. So I think that, that comes first. So everything that we put out, everything that I put out, the messages that I put out, I think about, right? I really think about before I put them out, they're, they're thoughtful. That may not mean that you agree with them. That might not mean that you like them. You might think that I'm an a-hole. But they're thoughtful on my end. Which is what really matters, right, in, in this context. Because I have already considered both sides. One of the really valuable, I think, pieces of insight from Nassim Tlaib, who wrote Black Swan and Antifragile, and his new, this is from his newest book called Skin in the Game, is you are not allowed to have an opinion on a subject and have a, have a side on a subject, unless you can argue the other side of that subject as well as anybody else. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to, right? Like that's just not okay to. So if I put out a thought on the internet, if I put out a message on the internet, for example, I've already thought about what that means. I've already thought about how different types of people might be impacted about this. And so I know if you're gonna come at me in some sort of way and spew negativity at me or call me something, I already know that that's going to happen, right? And I've, I've accepted it because I think that whatever I'm putting out is how I truly believe and represents me appropriately. Mm -hmm. As a result, I just laugh at negativity. And I think that's the most important point that's perhaps often missed is if you're really affected by somebody negatively responding to something that you're doing, I would first take a step back and say, have I really thought about this thing that I'm doing, this message that I put out and what it means and what it says? And am I really okay with it? Because my guess is that you have it. If, if you're really affected emotionally by the thing. Because if you have... You just laugh at people who come at you because you understand that it's a reflection on them, which is not necessarily like the best thing ever. You still don't want to make people feel bad. Like this person who got offended by, you know, us making fun of his comment. It, we feel we all feel horrible that it made him feel bad that we made fun of his comment, but it's not going to change anything that we do. Because we have thought about how we're doing things and what it means. And, and by the way, this person decided because he got offended that we made fun of the feedback that he gave us on the podcast, live on the podcast, without mentioning his name, without mentioning any identifying characteristics. So literally nobody in the world knew that we were talking about him except for him, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. This person refunded the Online Trainer Academy and didn't want anything to do with our company. 
nothing to do with the online trainer academy, right? That's not th – there's, there's a lot deeper stuff going on there, right? Should you let that oppose and change what you do, how you do it, if you've already thought about how you do stuff? I don't think so. I really don't think so. These are interesting points because from my perspective, from my perspective, um, anybody that we and I can't even I can't even really say anybody that we make fun of. I can more so say any situation that we uh, that we parody on the show as a form of entertainment. Yeah, because um, we're never going to like attack anybody except for right. James Clear. We're absolutely going to attack James Clear. <laughs> Absolutely going to attack that guy. He has far too many fans, and I don't like it, and I don't have enough, so I'm going to attack him to make myself feel better. And you, and you should, Jonathan. That's that's It's the right thing for you to do. Other than and James Clear, he will not attack anybody personally. <laughs> but the point is, this sort of makes you part of the family. Like, if we, if, if we, if we joke about a situation, bro, you're fam. Yeah. Joe Brown 2020, you're fam, homie. Yeah. Like, you, you know, you're you're in the club, you know. Uh, <laughs> we don't have any other really names of people, but, um, you know, there's quite a few people that we chat about here. Lithuania. Uh, and, and Lithuania's family. family. Yeah, Lithuania, you know, <laughs> practically our backyard now. Uh, you know, I was just what out there. We, last we were week. like number three in the UK, weren't we, last week? What'd you say? I don't, I don't know about that, Jonathan. I don't, you said something I'll like that. I think you probably saw a U and a K in the name of the country. <laughs> Ukraine. It was Ukraine. Yeah, That's what it was. Ukraine or you're, you're Pakistan or something like that, but I yeah. don't think it was just Uzbekistan. It was Uzbekistan for sure. Yeah, I don't think it was just a U and a K that we were number three. It was Singapore. In. Yeah. Um, Singapore. 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 Oh, okay. that is far less impressive. Okay, that's yeah. too bad. <laughs> they have lovely foliage in Singapore, though, from what I understand. Like, they have like lovely. they have like two thousand people, though. <laughs> they got well, we're count. killing it with uh, those 2,000. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'll take it. There's, right. There's at least five out of that 2,000 that are listening to our podcast now. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they got money. I mean, people in Singapore have money, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Isn't that where they filmed Crazy Rich Asians? Like, what wasn't part of, this, part of the scenes of that movie were there? Gosh, you guys I don't. Know. How do my pop culture that. references fall so flat here on this podcast? <laughs> People never see anything. <laughs> My God. Uh, in any case, well, I, dig I digress. We'll, we'll move past that. But, but, Keto, what, what? You always have an interesting and ingenious <laughs> perspective on these types of situations. Um, Thank you. you know, if you don't, Eddie Keto does. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so, so, what's, what's your, what's your take on this situation? You know, so. gl gloves up. Just be yourself here. <laughs> All right, that's dangerous turf, Ren. Um, yeah. So I think uh, it's important to recognize too um, that all of us, every single human in the world, we all inherently have uh, a desire and a need to be liked. That is totally mm -hmm. legit. It makes any person in the world uncomfortable to know that somebody out there doesn't like you for whatever reason. Whether you sit in that discomfort and let it stifle your plans and your vibe and your personality, that's entirely up to you. And that's an entirely different story. Like, it's okay to, to, to be like, oh my gosh, you know, I have this hater online or I have a peer who's always criticizing what I do. Then at that point, like the decision is yours of how you are going to take that in, if at all. Like, is it worth it? Is it worth your time? Is it, you know, is it the feedback that they're offering even worth your time looking into yeah. or... Like all these things, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't feel bad if you feel like that, like, oh my God, you know, when somebody comes at you, like it can be like an unsettling feeling, but you don't have to sit with it and you don't have to immediately change anything about who you are or what you do because as a result of that comment, like just sit with it and then take some time. It's like, okay, why am I feeling like that as a result to this comment, right? Because then that is your learning experience for yourself inside. It's like, why is this, it's triggering something in me. There's a response, either I'm really angry, I want to rage, or I, I'm super sad. I want to give up on my business entirely now because this person may, so sit with that and understand where those feelings are coming from for you. Because nothing else matters. It's so, just a teachable moment 
for you in who you are and how you're going to move forward from that. And, and, okay. and then that's it. <laughs> so, so what you're saying, what you're saying then Carolina is, is it worth it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. Exactly what was in my head. And then what does she and then and, and ding dee 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 I don't know what she says next. Like is it is it words? Is it lyrics? Oh yeah. Okay. It's not words. Exactly. It's T S Revo D N A T Pilf so and blah 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 blah. And then there's a whole bunch of profanity and stuff Listen like it, it's actually the next it literally it literally says, Give me all your numbers so I can phone ya. Your girl acting stank, then call me <laughs> over. Not on the bed, lay me on your sofa. <laughs> and then it's like it's just it's so this is such a it's such Legend. a filthy song. Legendary. <laughs> I, bed, lay me on I your sofa. highly recommend like just singing to that and just like dancing to that with your kids in the car. Highly recommend it. <laughs> Lost a few pounds in my waist for ya. This is the kind of beat that goes ra ta ta ra ta 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 ta. Sex me so good, I say blah blah blah. Oh my god, Jonathan is the worst rapper in the history of. Oh my god, that song is filthy though. I had to skip like full paragraphs. Tremendous song. It, that it, song that's, is that's number talent one. right Filthy. there. What can I say? It takes, the, it's a the second filter. line is actually the first line audio backwards. That's what it is. That yet it's actually oh. backwards. Is it worth it? Let me work it. Put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. And then flip when she back. says put my mm. thing down, flip it and reverse it, uh -huh. she is putting that line down, flipping that line that's and clever. reversing the audio on it. I did and not that's what know that. Oh, I yes, love yes. her. She's a freaking and, and that's clever. Exactly why they me. That's exactly why they spit me, Kato. She's so smart. She wrote a song and then did what the song said <laughs> in the oh, song. beat with the song. That's so... Didn't miss a dance step. Um, but Jonathan, I want to ask you a question. Uh, and it's not Miss <laughs> yes. Mr. Mina Elliott related. Uh, to the to the dismay of our audience. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't know much about anything well, else. You, well, stay with us here, Jonathan. Tighten up. Uh, keep keep, your, keep your head keep your head on the swivel, sir. There's a lot in the area, and and there's a, apparently of your own admission, there's an ass behind you. Um, so there is. I haven't heard him for a little bit, but I'm hoping we do. The uh, the ladies say you got a bright future behind you, Jonathan. So what I'm trying to say here is, you know, where's the line drawn, right? So where first of all, do we care too much? As, as as specifically as yes. online fitness professionals, mm -hmm. do we care too much what people might think? Is that hampering us in the context of our business, in your opinion? Yes. Well, I mean, uh, think about the psychology of somebody who is into fitness. These people, it kind of self-selects for people who care about their appearance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, if you really think about it, like out of all the good stuff in the body positivity movement that I that I'm a huge proponent for in the fitness industry, let's be honest here. We all started working out because we wanted to get laid in high school. I mean, there's like that's kind of I mean, that's uh, like I mean, I, not necessarily in high school, but like that's kind of how it starts for most people, right? Like, oh man. Like, that's kind of why you started going to the gym in the first place, because you, you wanted to feel like you looked better to be more attractive to the opposite or the same sex. Pretty much. Right? And so the people who become personal trainers, by and large, this isn't an absolute statement, but by and large are people who are more driven by that. What is that? Ever, I can't see it. Your lights in the way. I figured out the next cover of my book called Furniture Refugee oh. <laughs> Escape to the Is that, that your new book cover? You got to get that on the show notes. Oh, so that's hilarious. Since, that's since really we're doing funny. a live session, we can just pop so, that into the comments, can't we? When the live populates. Uh, I don't think this is a live session. I don't think we have oh. comments. Oh, yeah, there is a chat. Yeah, put it in the chat, Amber. There's a chat. Nobody else will see it other than us, but that's fine. Post. This podcast is for us. Want it post? You, you want it post to the group? And look, that's where I put it. Okay. All right. That makes it. Yeah, but I'm I'm paying such attention to you guys that I'm not I'm not right. flipping around on That's the right. internet. Uh, first, first time ever. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I guess I guess what I'm saying is, 
the psychology of somebody who is a personal trainer is often going to self-select for people who are more driven by appearance and how they feel like they look and appear to others than the rest of the population. I'm confident, I'm confident saying that as the majority, not as an absolute statement. As a result, us people are going to care what others think probably more than other people. That's just in a chemical nature, right? So yeah, I mean, it's a real thing. Um, it, it's, it's definitely a real thing. I mean, when I started having negativity spewed at me over the internet, like it beat me up. I mean, there was some really nasty things said about me in 2012, 2013, as I was, as my business started to get some attention. There was some really nasty stuff. So, and I've apologized for that. And uh, let's move past it. Well, you know what they say: keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So, it's it's a matter of it's a matter of figuring out how to deal with it for yourself. Some people are like, oh, you know, surround yourself with positivity. I don't really, that doesn't really work for me because I'm too unemotional for that. <laughs> Clearly. What I, yeah, right. What I think is really important is, is, as I said before, I mean, why is it that you do what you do? Are you confident in what you do? Do you, have you actually thought about how you're going about what you do? Mm -hmm. Like really thought about it and what it means and what it says, or are you just copying others? Right. Because if you're just copying others and you don't really understand why and somebody says something negative about you, yeah, it's going to beat you up because you might not have, you should probably should not have been doing that thing in the first place because you don't even understand it yourself. Right. You know, in this, in this day and age of seemingly required omnipresent content production where you just, you're supposed to just produce this massive amount of content on the internet in order to survive, which by the way is wrong. You, you don't have to do that. But in this day and age where you like think that you have to produce that, it's like, I got to come up with wise statements like multiple times a day. It's like, ain't nobody smart enough for that. And so as a result, people start putting out way less thoughtful material because they feel like they have to put out way more. As a result, they haven't really thought about it. And as a result, negativity beats them down. Mm, that makes sense. I, I, lo I love that. Was, that, that was really, it, it got deep. I feel like it came together well, but it, it, it fell off the rails for a while. Absolutely. It, it was like jello. You had to yeah. sit in, in the refrigerator a, l a bit longer. But once it, That's once right. it got cold enough, it congealed. Uh, then, then it was a treat. It became a treat after time. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's appropriate. It started all of a bowl of crap. Uh, but over uh, time, it turned into a tasty treat for the family. It started off It started off intriguing. I feel like people were like, oh, I feel like there might be something here. And then it turned into a complete bowl of crap. And then, then it, it somehow better. coalesced into a tasty then treat. Then it got better. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. so I, I love the thought behind why am I doing this, right? Because if I'm speaking, if I'm if I'm doing something purposeful, uh, and I understand the purpose, doesn't that sort of insulate me from whatever feedback I might get? You know, um, like Keto, Keto, I know you're saying things, but you muted yourself from when you were chowing Ooh. down on Chips Ahoy, so we can't hear you. Sorry, uh, I, no, I was saying that I think it it boils down to kind of like core core values as well, right? Right. Like if one of your right. core values, one of mine, for example, in my work is that I, I talk, um, I talk about things that I feel very comfortable. I just, about I just saw the book cover. Ear. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, isn't it? She's talented. Oh my gosh, Amber. She's out a window oh, longingly. <laughs> what did you find? <laughs> and takes First my all. Instagram pictures and turns them into hilarious <laughs> works of art. And I approve. I approve of what you're doing, Amber. Never stop. I it's love the it. the best thing that we do on this show. Like 100%. <laughs> like nothing else we do on this show is even close to the magic that Amber makes happen uh, with, with visuals. Uh, there's nothing <laughs> You're leaning against a windowsill, staring out into the light longingly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. oh, the furniture it's, it, refugee. It, it, 
Yeah, it'd, it'd be a great series too. I can see Netflix picking that up uh, you know, on the next episode of Catalina Balmales, Furniture Refugee. So as I was saying, core values. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. You yeah. had an important point before we totally got distracted by nonsense. You were actually saying things. And, and quite frankly, this is the best. This is the best example of literally what we're talking about. Like Carolina has this succinct, concise, you know, complimentary point. We just start laughing at a fictitious book cover uh, of her story, and we just totally interrupt it. But is she angry about that? No, because it's what we do here. This is, you know, this is much more important to us than whatever deep information you were about to glean from this podcast. It totally trumps that for us. Of course, we're going to defer to the book cover that we made during during the talk on the show. It's the more important thing. We don't want you guys to learn anything from this. Like, we got a fresh book cover out of this thing, and it's hilarious. We're going to lean into that. So don't take things so personally that you get from this podcast. Carol, please feel free to continue if you even remember what you've done. I do you're, remember, because it's 2021, Carol. 20, oh, 2021, right, right. Carol, it's all about the quality. So as I was saying, core values like if one of my core values in my in my work is that i stick to topics that i know i am actually uh very well versed on then the information mm -hmm. that i'm putting out feels very comfortable and i'm very secure because this is the information and topics that i have studied i have put put in my time i have gone through the research all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. i would never mm -hmm. go on and try to you know be super flashy about for example training athletes I know nothing mm, about right. that. So in the, if I put that, that is not authentic to me. And there, if somebody came and be like, oh my God, you're a complete idiot for saying all these things that are wrong. That would right. absolutely make me feel like crap because I'm like, oh, why am I? I was, because you're speaking out of something that you're not familiar with and it's not part of your authenticity. However, if I'm talking about uh, strategies for moms to be able to train at home with, you know, having, three, four kids running around the house or whatever. I can talk right. about that till the cows come home. Like that's, right. that's my jam. Like I got start and anybody who tries to come at me with negativity for that, I would be able to either refute eloquently or pettily mm -hmm. if I'm in petty caro mode, that's okay too. Right, right, obviously. <laughs> or, or simply just ignore it because I know where I stand in that topic in particular. And I know uh, that, you know, like I, I understand the value behind what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. nothing that comes right. at me shakes me. And I think that's an important difference there. Should, should we talk about the Dunning-Kruger effect? Do you think that that I, is appropriate to, to chat about? I love it. I love the topic. I love the topic of the Dunning-Kruger effect because it's super prevalent on the internet, for sure. Um, super prevalent on the internet. Um, Particularly the I, fitness I internet, where, I mean, the, the, the qualification requirements are so low for people who work in the fitness industry. Right. But they're put in such positions of authority so quickly that it gives them a false sense of confidence in their own abilities. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You, you know, uh, and it, it sort of it sort of also ties into imposter syndrome too for coaches on the other end because you know it's it's ironic that people that know the least think they know the most, and people that know the most think they're going to be judged the most because of the things that they clearly do know. Um, you know, people that sort of suffer from the you know Dunning Kruger effect, they don't they never feel like imposters. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, that was one of the wisest things that Krista Scott Dixon said to me once. She's like, just the fact alone that you at times are riddled with self-doubt or feel like an imposter, mm -hmm. that is a healthy characteristic of a very normal and, you know, personality. He, she's like, the right. psychos are the ones who never, ever doubt anything they ever do. She's right. like, what's up so, with those? <laughs> so let's, let's, let's talk about what the actual effect is for anybody who doesn't know, because they, they, they probably know what it is, but they, they may not know the name. Um, I'll read the Wikipedia definition really quick, and then and then I'll quickly describe it. And and we can include the uh, one of my favorite illustrations in the show notes, Amber, with Mount Stupid. Uh, but the Dunning-Kruger effect is a hypothetical cognitive bias stating that people with low ability at a task overestimate their ability. So basically, what it means is that people who obviously have no ability or no knowledge of something have no confidence in it. But as you gain a little... Thing, 
you start to overestimate your knowledge of that. And then as you gain more knowledge of that thing, i.e. as you progress to become more of an expert, your confidence actually begins to go down. Because now you have a greater understanding of the thing, you understand all of the ramifications of it, all of the different contexts that that thing could be in, and you actually have less confidence. And, and then eventually, if you gain enough knowledge about a thing, your confidence starts to go up. But most people never get to that point. Most people end up in that valley. And so what happens, and here's one of the big problems, is that you have this, this cognitive effect where people who know much less about a thing are way louder about it and people who know more right. about a thing are less confident to respond right and it's a huge problem on the internet um mm. there are there are entire communities where this effect is just spewed everywhere and so mm. um I love that mount stupid diagram because the idea is like once you know a little bit about something you're at the top of mount stupid uh <laughs> and then you know you, you start to go down <laughs> In, enroll in the on, enroll in the online trainer academy. It's a great course. Uh, you you can upgrade to the mentorship. I really recommend it. It's called the Advantage Mentorship. If you don't, you're a dumb dumb. Okay. Is it worth it? It's only worth it if you work it. You gotta oh, you gotta man. you gotta put your thing down, spin it, reverse it a few times, and then I'm yeah, not okay, doing. Yeah, yep, we're not. OTA. Um, all that I was gonna, all that I was gonna finish with is like, if you in the valley after Mount Stupid, like, start to talk about what you, start to talk about what you know, but talk about it openly right. and say, hey, here's what I've learned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's where I'm still questioning, but like, communicate it. Don't feel like just because you know stuff, but there's still gaps in your knowledge. Understand that. Because you know more stuff than most other people who are speaking loudly about a thing, you know where the gaps in your knowledge are. These other people literally know less than you, which is why they don't even know that they have gaps in their knowledge, which is why they're more confident to talk about a thing. I hope that gives you confidence to talk about a thing. Also, the Online Trainer Academy is the industry-leading certification for people who want to start and grow an online training business, or uh, but also for nutrition coaches. And as I previously stated, if you don't enroll in it today, um, you're a dumb dumb. Okay, Ren, you want to do show notes? <laughs> yeah. So show notes can be found at onlinetrainer.com/podcast. Nice. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, this iteration. Uh, this episode, episode 80 something of the online trainer wow. show, whatever it is, 81, 80, 81, episode, episode 81. Um, 82. Uh, I think my grandmother was 81 when she passed away. So we don't know if they're going to be 82 episodes. Wow. Uh, but you, you we've, <laughs> well, we've had a good, good, we've had a long life. This is 82. So we're good. We're safe now, Ren. Oh, this it is, is, it okay, is 82. Right. <laughs> we're in the Hi. afterlife of this podcast now. Uh, we're, we're in podcast heaven. Uh, looking down on all the all the listeners um, and hey if you got a purpose man do the stuff that matches your purpose and when people critique it you won't feel as bad about it but if you're doing stuff sort of randomly uh, just for the purposes of uh, of love from the communities out there on the internet uh, you know if, what they say if you live for accolades you'll die from criticism something like that I don't oh know, yeah some, yeah, something like that. I think it's a James Clear quote. But good show today, guys. <laughs> we'll check in with you next time on the online trainer show. Uh, bring you more of the that uh, succinct and incorruptible James Clear wisdom. I'll make it, you know. I never know what to say. Uh, I'm just <laughs> riding off the coattails of the personal trainer development center. I'll throw a couple of words in there. Trainer, this educate. Uh, what other words do they like to hear out there? Um, uh, you know, next level, Overcome. you know, I'll, freedom, yeah, freedom, freedom, good. freedom, that's a good number, freedom, um, and become uh, a freedom fighter, personal trainer, right. rise freedom above the rest of your industry, right. Right. You know, makes six I'm renting, figures, uh, renting a figures, Lamborghini figures, this weekend, figures. so uh, when the Lambo yeah. gets here this weekend, I'll shoot the OTA ad, uh, <laughs> and people will just join in droves, because I'm talking in front of a Lamborghini with the doors open. Uh, that's what people do you, want. Do you ever notice how these like how these like young business coaches only show like two wheels max in their Lamborghini? It's because they <laughs> as they as they get a new client, they buy another hubcap. <laughs> <laughs> a 
<laughs> buy another tire. Do you have another set? Oh my gosh. Uh I've got I've got nothing else today. I didn't even know it was supposed to be live. I'm glad I glad I took a shower though. Uh at least that's one of us. Uh jingle jingle. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast.